Welcome, friends. Good evening, if you're here with me live. Welcome to Mindful Mondays. We'll start in a few minutes, and so let's find our seat, establish our seat, close eyes, and just take like two minutes or so, allowing ourselves and everybody else to arrive. And we'll begin shortly. All right, friends, open your eyes if you haven't already. So a big warm welcome to you. This is a nice, quiet holiday day for us. I don't know about all of you, but I hope you had a good day. We've been talking in the month of June about mindfulness of emotion. And it's leading us into our practice for, I don't know, maybe the next couple of months. We'll see how it evolves. But I want to open first with a story. There's a story of one man who was recommended to go to retreat, meditation retreat, by his psychologist. It was a mindfulness retreat. And he went through the intensity, you might imagine, that happens at retreat. All the joy and excitement, the fear and the anger and the grief, such strong things we go through on retreat. It's what makes it so incredible having to deal with emotions he hadn't always had to deal with in that way. And he got back and he told his therapist, he said, you said that I'd feel better. You said that I would feel better going on retreat, starting mindfulness practice. And the therapist said, well, you do. You're feeling your anger better. You're feeling your fear better. You're feeling your shame better. Kind of a silly, silly story, but it's all very true. It's one of, the, one of the big reasons I think a lot of people quit meditation is because without a skilled instructor or class or teacher, a lot can start to come up and they're like, this just isn't worth it, you know? And so being on this journey together in this way, I hope is going to really help you navigate all that comes up. I will say, um, if you haven't yet registered for the July 16th retreat and you'd like to come as a member, it's free for you. So it's the weekend of July 16th. And if you go to practice.laurenyoga.net, it's all the way at the bottom. It's called the big quiet. I think the code is summer for it to be free. I'll have to double check that, but you can reach out to me if you need help registering. I hope you can make it. So one of the places I want to emphasize tonight is when we start to work with emotion, there's a secondary thing that starts to happen. And the secondary thing is what I want to address tonight. In the Buddhist tradition, it's called the second arrow. Some of you have heard this before. And I'm starting to understand this even more deeply this year. It's so amazing how we think we understand a concept and then we have this whole new revelation about it. So the first arrow is the tough thing that we're dealing with, right? Happens to all of us all the time. It's the thing that's unavoidable. 
anything from something small during the day, a small annoyance, all the way to something major, a health scare, um, an illness, a death, a loss of a job, right? There's a big spectrum of tough things that we deal with all the time. But the second arrow, the second arrow that comes, so that thing we can't avoid is the first arrow. The second arrow that comes is this idea that we're not happy with ourselves because we're going through the thing that the first arrow has presented. We don't like ourselves for having that tough thing in our lives as if it's somehow our fault, you know? There's a sense of, I feel bad, and so I am bad. A really easy example, I know we have all different relationships with sleep. I am one of those people who cannot not get good sleep. I am a total wreck if I don't get good sleep that's at least seven hours long. And the day after, the morning after, the day after, I don't get good sleep, I'm suffering already because I don't feel that great. I don't feel like my vibrant self. I just want to eat all the crappy food and down coffee all day, which just adds to it, right? But the second arrow that day is always one of self-doubt. It's always one of somehow not doing enough. And there's all this other stuff that I realize starts to bubble up in my psyche. For me, it's not as much language like negative self-talk as it is just a general attitude of malaise, right? Different than feeling tired, different than feeling depleted. It's like the psychological component of that. And so when we say the second arrow that we sort of lay these trips on ourselves, some of you might hear it as a voice in the head, right? That inner critic. Some of you like me, might just feel it as a really like low self-confidence, high doubt, um, you know, just all, all the other secondary challenging feelings that are, that are a result of that unpleasant event of not sleeping well. And that's a pretty benign example, right? When things, the harder things get, the bigger the event, the deeper the arrow, the first arrow, I think the louder either that voice gets or that energy gets. And so with mindfulness practice, we get to pause and notice the separation between the thing that happened and what we're telling ourselves in general because how we're feeling is rooted in something completely different than some story we're telling ourselves it kind of hooks our identity, right? We somehow tell ourselves, I shouldn't be feeling this way. I shouldn't be feeling this way. There's a sense of shame. We start to think it's who we are. I mean, if I look back on some of my sleepless days, I mean, the things I tell myself that I see as identity and truth and I just really hook into, come to find the next morning after a great night's sleep, all of that is gone. And this perspective is really important because how much time and energy and heartache do we go through as a result of a bad night's sleep or whatever your first arrow is, you know? That's a minor example again. Okay. So the practice that we are going to start to move into is called RAIN, R-A-I-N, it's an acronym. And this was initially developed by a teacher named Michelle McDonald, maybe 20, 30 years ago. And Tara Brock has since taken it and changed it a little bit, and it's really the baseline of her teaching. It's a really beautiful teaching. And in June, when we worked with emotion, we were working with the R and the A, and then we'll work with that a little bit more today, and then we'll get to the I and the N over the coming weeks. So RAIN stands for recognize, allow, investigate, and nurture. And then there's a part that's called after the RAIN, that's a whole separate concept. But recognize and allow is pretty much what we were doing in June. 
Recognize is waking up from the trance. It's recognizing that we're having an experience, that we're having an emotion. And then allow is what we're practicing tonight also, which is instead of pushing that away and resisting it, we're saying yes to it. We're allowing that emotion in. And when we say yes to something, it doesn't mean in this context that we have to like it. It doesn't say, mean that we're condoning whatever the root event was that caused that emotion. We're not saying that. We're not saying we agree with it. None of that is part of this practice. We're just not denying our inner experience. So we notice how we're feeling and we allow, we say yes to that energy, not to the story, but just to the experience that we're having in our body, right? We're saying yes to allowing ourselves to fully feel that thing. We're not giving ourselves a hard time for feeling it. We're not saying we're a bad person because we're having this experience. So let me see. Okay, good timing. Let's start the little practice. It'll be about 10 minutes tonight, maybe a little bit longer. So get into your dignified, comfortable seat. Sit however you want. Close your eyes. And to open our meditation, I'd like you to just open to sound for a moment. Open to sound and notice what you hear both close in in your environment, but also much farther away. And then turn your attention toward your breath and just receive a few full breaths. Think about each exhale, just releasing maybe physical tension or emotional tension. And our practice tonight is really just a practice of noticing what happens for you in your body, in your heart, and your mind as you explore the difference between resisting and saying yes. Resisting and saying yes. And so to begin, let some situation come to mind from the recent past that might have brought up for you some emotional reactivity. I really encourage you not to go to the hardest thing that you're going through right now, but something kind of middle ground, something with medium intensity for you. We want to be able to explore this technique and still hold our container so we don't ever want to go to the most traumatic event as we practice this. You can think about these practices as as practice for when something bigger does happen. You've done this a lot of times with something just a little easier, okay? So as you conjure up this memory, it's something that brought up annoyance, hurt, anxiety, sadness, something in a relationship, something at work, something to do with your own behavior. That's really fertile ground to work with. So as well as you can, let yourself go inside that situation enough to really get a feeling for what it was that was really getting to you. 
Like what was so upsetting about this thing? What was so annoying about it? What was so bad about it? And really sensing the reaction and noticing how the reaction that you probably automatically have is in some way saying no to that moment. Maybe that no is like a, this shouldn't be happening. I shouldn't be feeling this. This is bad. The no presumes something's wrong with somebody, yourself, with life. And you might examine here and sense how your body says no. Is there some kind of tensing in your body around the situation, a feeling of contracting, tightening? Just sensing where you feel that. Saying no to this experience, no to the other person, if there's another person involved, no to yourself. What happens in your mind when there's no? And more than that, just sense, is this a familiar feeling? The sense that this shouldn't be, is this familiar for you? when you're feeling this reactive emotion that you pinpointed, that there's something off with you or with the person or with life, is there something wrong? And taking a few full breaths again. Staying with this same situation. And if you need to re-enter the situation to find contact with it again. Have the image of it and a sense of what it is that's upsetting. And as you contact this place in the body, that place of contraction or stuckness, that feeling of tension physically, can you deepen your attention to this stuck place? But this time with the intention of yes. So instead of letting the reactive self take over, purposefully with the intention of yes, contact this place in the body. For some of you, the word yes won't sit right, and that's fine. You can just have the intention of allowing. We're in the A of rain. The attitude, maybe, of allowing. Maybe you use the words, this too belongs. You could use the words, this is part of life. Or to shorten it, this too. So whether it's fear or anger or hurt, 
it belongs. Saying yes to the sadness, yes to the judgment. Not agreeing with the content, but this is just what's happening right now. Not saying yes to the behavior, yours or someone else's. But saying yes to the felt sense, the energy of it in your body. Yes to what your body and heart is experiencing. Letting the life of the moment be just as it is. I'll give you another 30 seconds or so just to notice what happens when you say yes in your body, in your mind, and in your heart. Please receive one last time a few full breaths just to kind of ground you and release. And then please open your eyes. Interesting, interesting meditation. And I think just to reiterate again that we're not saying yes to the details. We're not saying yes to the behavior. We're not saying yes to the event. But what we're doing through this meditation practice is practicing not resisting. When we start to resist, we essentially close ourselves off from the ability to heal. We close ourselves off from the ability to process, to allow that emotion to move in and through. When we resist what's happening inside our own reality, our own physical reality, that's when experience starts to get stuck in the tissues, right? The issues are in the tissues, you've probably heard. That means all of our lived experience stays in the body until it's not anymore. That beautiful line from Viktor Frankl, between the stimulus and the response, there is a space. And in that space is our power and our freedom. And so the A and RAIN, the allowing, opens that space up. So instead of our habitual reaction, with the A and RAIN, there's this allowing, there's this decision and choice that we have. And essentially, it allows us to take our own power back when we find ourselves in really challenging, complicated situations. And so there's a million ways to practice RAIN, and we'll practice a lot of them. And if you want to practice this on your own anytime, do it with something kind of middle of the road annoying or something that just pissed you off, right? Wait until you do it with something that's a life-changing type of event. I'm here to help you through that if you want to work through that together. Um, I would definitely get some guidance if you're going to take it to a bigger thing. But for now, practicing this, saying yes to what you're feeling in your body, that sacred pause when something challenging happens for the next week or for your whole life. (laughs) Okay, friends. Thank you so much for being here. It was great to sit with you. And I send you all the love. Have a great evening.